Agenda's ready? Timer? In St. Petersburg and throughout Russia, Karina Shapina works tirelessly to help integrate children with disabilities into society. Karina was part of the first group of students with disabilities to visit the United States in 1996 and 1997. Her flex experience took her to Michigan. She conducts training that focuses on issues of minority youth participation, integration of youth with disabilities, and human rights education. Karina serves as president of the International Association for Hard of Hearing Young People in St. Petersburg and currently works as a journalist. Karina, a youth exchange student from Russia, said that after her return to, from, from St. Petersburg to the United States, she was filled with the cool idealism and a romanticism that she could make a difference in Russia. She said she's continually amazed at the opportunities that the United States provides to help people with disabilities, and she shares her experiences in her extensive travels throughout Europe. Quote, I have more self-confidence and self-awareness because of my experiences in the United States, says Karina. So again, it's just another example of one of the thousands of students whose lives have been changed by the FLEX program and how they go on to become the leaders of tomorrow. And today I'd like to be addressing the arguments that the negative team brought up. I'm first going to be going over the arguments of topicality. There are three topicality presses. I'm then going to be looking at solvency and their four solvency points. So first I'd like to start out by talking about their first two solvency arguments. I mean, sorry, pardon me. Topicality arguments. The first one was reform versus increase, and the second one significant. I'm just going to clump these together and talk about them for a moment. Basically, I'd first like to talk about the comparative advantage case that we brought up in our 1AC, talking about how we are comparing the advantages of our plan to the current system. And though there isn't a problem, that doesn't mean that we can't improve something. Consider my health. If I decided I wanted to improve my health because of the advantages I would achieve, I don't have to be sick to improve my health. I can be perfectly healthy but still gain advantages to improving my health. And this is the same way with the FLEX program. We have advantages to gain. We have put those in our 1AC, the public diplomacy, democracy, and public opinion, which come with it increased democracy and positive opinion. And would a policymaker block a program simply because there is no problem? Absolutely not. The program has been successful. Therefore, it is logical to increase the funding to the program to allow for greater benefits and greater advantages. So that's just basically talking about our comparative advantage case and how we're just comparing the advantages of the plan to the current system. And I'd like to go into talk about the significance. I'm just putting these together. The significance point here is basically, I'd like to let you know that this is a 360% increase over the status quo. 360% from the status quo. That is a significant number. We are going from 1,000 to 5,000. We are going from 19.2 to $80 million. That is a significant change. Now I'd like to move down to the Russians versus Russia argument. And again, my partner brought this up in cross-examination, but basically we said that the Russians make up the Russian government. Without the Russian people, there is no Russian government. If all the people were to leave Russia, there would be no government to change policy towards. Russians make up Russia. Now I'd like to move down to the solvency points today. And I'm first going to be talking about the hatred that they brought up about how um, there are, how the, we, we said that there was hatred. I'd just like to point out to you again that we never said that Russia hates us. We simply were mentioning that they disliked us. And we talked about in our 1AC how this program improved the attitude that they were very happy with their experiences and only 30% of them would have been able to come to the United States without this program. Now I'd like to read a piece of evidence talking about how the FLEX program is effective in shaping the attitudes among students. This is from the Congressional Records of the United States in 2003, and it says, quote, the FLEX program has been extremely effective in shaping attitudes among the students selected to participate. A U.S. government study which compared Russian FLEX alumni with other Russian youth of the same age indicated that the FLEX alumni are more <coughs> open to and accepting of Western values and democratic ideals. They are more likely to become leaders in and to make a contribution to society, end quote. This piece of evidence was comparing the Russian FLEX alumni from the program with the Russian youth and showed that they are more open to Western values, more open to democracy, and more likely to become leaders. Now, I'd just like to talk about, under solvency, this is just a, 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 a solvency argument here, and I'd just like to talk about how this is a long-range investment. While we will see the results, this is a long-term investment that we're making. And this piece of evidence is from the United States Department of State. And this is in October 2009. It's talking about the student exchange program. And it says, quote, the long-range investment is minuscule considering the multiplier effects over time. The age group of these programs makes them the most sensitive and vulnerable of all the department's exchange programs, demanding whatever resources available to facilitate the safety and the welfare of the participants, end quote. So this is just talking about how it's a long-range investment, but it's over time, and they are the most sensitive and vulnerable in all our resources 
focus should be devoted to these programs. Now I'd like to go on to just talk about, they brought up an argument about that they already, that no one has awareness of the FLEX program. And I'd just like to remind you again, the 1AC, we talked about how there are 40,000 applicants, 40,000 applicants for 1,050 scholarship awards. I'd just like to clarify again, we mentioned in the 1AC that it was $19.2 million currently in place, and we are increasing the Russian portion to $80 million. And we see that there are, um, we read evidence in the 1AC talking about how there's 1,050 scholarship awards for the 40,000 applicants. And I'd like to move down now to the mention of school curriculum. Uh, they brought up that all the school curriculum is, um, is talking about, it's communist now and it's not talking about um, democracy anymore. And I'd just like to talk about the Department of State enforces this program and they regulate it and they oversee and decide where the students will be placed in the American, and what American high schools they will be placed in. Now I finally like to move down to I just think they brought up a solvency point about barely any students, and I just like to remind you again that we have that there are 1,050 scholarship awards currently, and we're creating 5,250 for the Russian students. Now this is under solvency. I'd just like to talk about democracy for a moment. And this is this is a piece of evidence from December 2010, and it's talking about how democracy is encouraged in young people through the Flex program. And it says, quote, the Future Leaders Exchange program was born from former Senator Bill Bradley's conviction that true democracy in the face of the former Soviet Union can only be achieved through its young people. Senator Bradley said, quote, what a better way to teach democratic habits than to bring tens of thousands of young people to America where they will learn about the privileges and the opportunities that come with living in a democracy, end quote. Let's just talk about how democracy is achieved through the young people. And we talk about how the 73% of the Flex alumni are more open to democracy, and they want the Western style democracy for their own country. So today, I'd just like to go over what we talked about today. We talked about and topicality, I combined the first two topicality arguments. We talked about reform versus increase in significant. We talked about how it's a 360% increase over the status quo. We then talked about Russians versus Russia and how the Russians make up the Russian government and if all the people were to leave Russia, we would have no government to change policy towards. And we then moved down to the solvency arguments and we talked about hatred and I just mentioned that we did not say that the Russian people hate us. We said that they simply dislike us and we've seen that this program has been extremely effective in changing the attitudes. We then talked about um, we talked about how they already have an awareness of the FLEX program. We see that they have 40,000 applicants yearly. And we talked about the school curriculum, how the Department of State will enforce and regulate, and they will oversee and decide. And we talked about how there isn't barely any students. We are doing a 360% increase on the status quo. We're going from 1,000 to 5,250 5, students, and we, are, we will see the effects over time because of this significant increase. And for these reasons, I urge you to vote affirmative in today's debate round. Thank you.